All right, so now for this speech. Okay. Throughout the end of the year and over the course of the summer, everyone at school was asking me what I was going to speak about today. I was given loads of advice. I was told several times, I'm so glad it's not me that has to get up there. And was told by many that I should just make a video. Well, you saw the video. And ultimately, I just decided to do what I do best, and that's teach. Um, so instead of super inspirational words of wisdom, I offer you an interactive, hopefully humorous and informative glimpse into what I do on a regular basis. So. Before, <laughs> before I can let you in on some of my little secrets, I think it's important to know a bit about me. For the past 10 years, I've had the pleasure of sitting and listening to some incredible words from past Teacher of the Year recipients. As I sit listening, I can't help but wonder, who are you? As I look out into the audience today, there are many familiar faces, but the amount of people that I don't know trumps that. So, in case you were wondering, who are you, about me, here's what you need to know. My family has always been supportive, honest, and compassionate, and has been there for me no matter what. I went to college six hours away from here, and without hesitation, they would drive up to good old Potsdam, New York, in the snow, sleet, and rain to watch me sing in the choir. When I started at Norwich Public Schools, the support did not stop. My family has been to every one of my concerts and all of my musical productions, sometimes helping with baked good, big goods, excuse me, hair and makeup, and even with directing. My super awesome family is here today, with the exception of my sister Ashley, who's an LA teacher at Lebanon, and she's sitting there during professional development as well. I am beyond grateful for the love and support they give me on a daily basis. This year marks my 10th year at NPS. I honestly never thought I would be teaching middle school for this long when I first started here, but here I am, and I love it. All of my degrees are in different areas of education, and this was completely done on purpose. I want to expand my horizons as much as possible, and receiving degrees in these three areas has done just that. I have to say that my favorite is the degree in educational technology from UConn. It was the most stressful, but most rewarding year of my educational career thus far, and I just completed that in July. Um, I'm a nerd. I happily admit that, and I'm certainly not embarrassed by it. I love going to school and researching hot topics in educational technology. I told my friend Victor the other day that I actually like citing sources in APA style. <laughs> I love my dogs. We had six when I received notice that I was Teacher of the Year, so most of the articles posted that I had six, but unfortunately over the summer we lost our awesome Basset Hound team to lymphoma. He was the coolest, most laid back dog ever, and we miss him terribly. Many of my friends here knew Tank, and he was an awesome dog. Um, and then finally, Caitlin and I love to sing together. We usually perform and practice the original songs that she writes. She sings the melody, and I make up the harmonies. We performed at the Aspire Talent Show last year, and it was a great experience for us and for the students. And I have a feeling that we're probably going to get roped into this other talent show. <laughs> I started to become interested in technology when I was completing my master's degree at Eastern. I took a class called Technology in Early Childhood Education and had to create a web quest on the life cycle of a butterfly. I was amazed at how simple it was and was instantly hooked. A short time later, I purchased my first MacBook and around the same time, Karen received grants for the MacBook cards at school. When they weren't being used for science, I tried to sneak them into my room to use GarageBand with my students as often as possible. And if anybody knows what that's from, you're welcome. It's going to be stuck in your head for the rest of the day. <laughs> Almost everything that I have learned about technology has been self-taught. If I don't know how to do something, I Google it. I have dubbed myself the Google Master in my house because I'm a way better Googler than my husband. I have been able to learn everything I needed to know from searching it on the internet. Over the last few years, I have tried many new and exciting things in my classroom. My students have not only used GarageBand, but have created movies and iMovie, have used blogs, created prezzies and podcasts, learned how to make stop motion videos, and much, much more. All of these projects have come with bumps and complications along the way, but I have never let that stop me from trying them and from continuing to use them in my classroom. I always have a plan B, and sometimes even a plan C, if the technology doesn't work. If I find that certain aspect of the project or the lesson isn't working, I reflect and modify it for my next group of students. There are projects that I have started three or four years ago that still don't always go as planned, but I'm not giving up on them yet. So what does this mean for you? 
It is my hope that after today, you will be inspired to try something new in your classroom and step out of your comfort zone. As educators, we already have a lot on our plates, especially with the Common Core and the new teacher evaluation. If you are willing to give just one thing a chance, I guarantee that you will find that it's probably not that bad, and it will actually help you meet certain aspects of the CCSS and C. So, before I let you in on all my little secrets, I need you to take out your cell phones or a tablet if you have it. And this can be any cell phone, it doesn't have to be a smartphone as long as you get a signal in here. And if you don't get a signal, that's okay. All right, so I'm about to give you a password. You should not allowed to do this. Um, so that we can complete these activities. This is not so that you can go on Facebook or check your email. But here's the password for you to join the KMS guest Wi-Fi. So if you open up your smartphone and find that on there, you can do it's KMS Cougars 25. And then I just have a couple of questions that I want to answer. I'll have you answer. It's an online poll that we're going to um, all do together. So it's KMS guest. And KMS Cougars 25. Cougars has to be lowercase. And it should work. So while you're hopefully finishing up getting uh, logged into the Wi-Fi, so I'm going to use a site called PollEveryWhere.com. It's an online polling site, and you can just go on and create a free account. Um, you, this is another tool. It's not part of the five, but it's another tool that you could use in your classroom just to get a quick check for understanding with your students. Um, this can be used on the iPads. It can also be used on a computer. Um, so hopefully we're good to go. So, <coughs> So this is your first question. It's, I am afraid to use technology in the classroom. So true or false, um, I will not know who sends these, I promise you. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. You can either text a code to that number up top, the 37607. You can tweet if you like to tweet. So you just have to do at poll, and, and, you, and you put in one of those codes. Or you can go to pollev.com and you can submit your answer that way. So if it's true, if you are afraid to use technology in the classroom, you can type in 454534 to any one of those. And if you no, know, you're not afraid to use it in the classroom, then you would type the 454672. So again, you can text it, you can tweet it, or you can go to pollev.com. technology, which is awesome. So I'm actually going to skip my next question because it was, why are you afraid to use it? But most of you aren't. So we'll just continue on. All right. Next question. So the first thing that I want to share with you is Class Dojo. This is one of my all-time favorite things. I just started using it last year. Um, so Class Dojo is a behavior management software where you can reward students for their actions in the classroom. You can also give negative points to students if necessary. I use it in my classroom to support and reward positive behavior, and the kids love it. If you have a projector, you can show it on the screen, or if you still have a computer that's hooked to a TV, you can do it that way too. Um, you can create your own positive and negative categories. Um, 
and you can show the kids how they're doing. I generally use it for positive behavior. I try to avoid giving the students negative points, uh, just to show you what it looks like in case you haven't seen it before. So this is when you log in, this is what the screen looks like, and I've created a demo class for today. So here are our students. <laughs> So you can see that many of them have already earned some points. Okay? So if I wanted to, I could award the whole class um, because they're doing awesome today. That was not going to work for me. Sorry. All right. No. All right. It's not going to work for you. But so you would click on it and then you would go over to the side and you could award points um, to the class. There we go. Give award. So I'm just going to give Abby an award. For excellent effort today. <laughs> <laughs> so she would earn another point. I can award multiple students, so I can go select all students, I can give them all the award. So for being respectful to me while I'm up here. So everybody gets one for being respectful. Um, like I said, I don't usually like to give negative points, but sometimes if I need to. So if I notice that uh, Jason Foster <laughs> is playing with his cell phone while I'm talking. <laughs> So, you can create all of the categories yourself, you can modify them, you can add things to them. Last year I had our four R's, um, respect, responsibility, readiness, and then this was the recognition part of it. So it was really cool, um, you can, like I said, you can add different things to the categories. And the kids absolutely love it, they are so fascinated with seeing how many points they have, they can change their avatars, it's really a neat thing. So the next thing I want to share with you are QR codes. Um, I don't have much experience using QR codes in my classroom, but I have many colleagues from UConn that have excellent lessons and ideas. One way that you can use a QR code is to communicate with parents. You can create a link to the school website, your teacher website with contact information. You could link to a school newsletter, anything, and post it in an area where parents can easily scan it. I plan on creating one for my school website and posting it outside of my door at Open House. In the classroom, you can use QR codes for, stu or for students to utilize with the iPads. You can give students codes instead of URLs to type out. It makes life so much easier. You can have the students go on a scavenger hunt by scanning the codes and have students create their own QR codes with links to stories they've written, videos, and much more to pa for parents to scan when they come to your classroom. The next slide is uh, Socratic. This is one of my favorite assessment tools. It's another web-based application. You can also download this one as an app. And I forgot to mention that with Class Dojo. That's web-based, you can also download it as an app. Um, so the reason that I love Socratic so much is so, because you can create quizzes online and students can answer the questions at their own pace or at a teacher-determined speed. You can use it as a review tool, an assessment tool, or an exit slip. And the best part is that when the kids are done, their scores get emailed to you in a spreadsheet for easy evaluation. Um, you can create your own quizzes, you can share quizzes, and it gives the students immediate feedback, which is also pretty awesome. So, time for a quiz. All right, so if you have your smartphone still, this one has to be a smartphone, you can't use any cell phone for this one. So if you have your smartphone, go to the internet and go to m.socratic.com. And then when you arrive there, you're going to put in this number, 64993. I will come back to this in just a minute. I just want to get it set up real quick. So m.socratic.com and 64993. The only bad thing about Socratic is that only 50 people at a time can um, can participate in the quiz. Hopefully you don't have 50 kids in your classroom. <laughs> but it works well. Like, you can use it on the iPad. I use it with my kids on the iPad all the time. Or uh, it's a MacBook. So there are five questions in this quiz. Four of them are multiple choice, and one of them is a short answer. I hope you were paying attention at the beginning. As people are taking it, you can show up here, how many people have logged in, what their names are, how many questions they've answered, what their progress is, so you can view this as the teacher and see how people are doing. Ooh. Caitlin Miller, you better get all these right. <laughs> Did 
the kids really like using this too. They think it's pretty cool that they get to take a quiz on an iPad. Most of my student work um, focuses either around composition using GarageBand, and I do a lot of writing with my kids, so some of the narrative writing projects and informational writing projects we take and we turn into multimedia projects, which is pretty cool. Um, and those last few projects were Panther Productions, which is an after-school program that I run with my sister. And the last film of the little boats that were on the water was actually part of, a Connecticut, part of the Connecticut Student Film Festival and was submitted in with a bunch of uh, work from high school students um, last spring, so that was pretty neat for our kids. All right, so the last thing that I want to share with you is our professional learning networks, or PLNs. PLNs are also known as personal learning networks. A PLN is a network of people that a learner interacts with and gains knowledge from. So two big sites that you can use are uh, Twitter and Google Plus. I have both. I created my Google Plus account for my classes at UConn. Um, I don't use my Twitter very often because I don't really like it. I like using Google Plus a lot better. On Google Plus, I have created several circles that contain wonderful resources with technology and education. Many of the articles and information that I share with the staff at TMMS come from Google Plus. When you create a PLN, 
You can post as often or as little as you want. I hardly ever post anything myself. I just look at what everybody else has posted. I use Google Plus to gather information and resources um, regularly, especially on the topics of educational technology. So these are just some examples. So lots of tips for iPads, um, how to use technology in the classroom, keeping your kids focused. There's some really good stuff out there. You know where to find it. I know there are many changes taking place this year, and the thought of adding one of these technologies may seem daunting and impossible, but I encourage you to jump in and give something new a try. You never know what you might learn, and in turn, what your students will learn. Start small, maybe with a PLN or try and class dojo for a week with your students. Don't try to make the technology fit your situation or completely create something new, just so you can say you are using it. Um, take a look at what you're already doing, because I guarantee it's good stuff, and the technology will only make it better. I have created a Google Doc with links to resources that I've shared with you today, as well as links to several other resources that you can try in your classroom. I'm gonna email that to you later today. I hope that you will take a few minutes to search through them and learn about something new. I invite you to post your own links, comments, and tips on the document, and hope that will be, it will be a continually growing resource for NPS. I hope that you have found this information useful and exciting, and I look forward to seeing your links and comments on the Google Doc that I've created. Please feel free to contact me at any time. I check my email constantly. Um, if you have any questions or want to know how I implement certain technologies in my classroom. I appreciate your time and attention today. I hope that each and every one of you has an amazing school year filled with new and exciting things.